Awesome Lord. Hi everyone. I want to start out by saying congratulations to everybody in this room. Um, even if you're not a graduate, you've played such an incredible part in our amazing journey and have just made it all possible. But, of course, a special shout out to my wonderfully attractive and intelligent class of 2018 because we made it! Oh. <laughs> We finally reached the end of step one. And I'm so excited for what comes next because the lives of everyone in this room are about to drastically change. Many of us are preparing to become world travelers. Some of us are preparing ourselves for grad school in the fall. And a number of us, like myself, are about to start our first jobs as software engineers. With my entrance into the tech world, I've noticed myself falling into a pretty unique lifestyle that has ironically become a norm for our generation. In fact, uh, over the past couple of years, I've heard my friends use two words to describe this culture that's gained so much traction but has also led me to feel a considerable amount of guilt. Those two words are tech, trash. A lot of parents and faculty with us today might not know what tech trash is, and that's totally okay, because you can't find a definition for this in the dictionary or even on the internet. But it's one of those general concepts that seems to have permeated through our student culture. So, authored by my fellow students, this is the definition of tech trash. One, when your morning commute comes to you in the form of a luxury shuttle bus, <laughs> Two, getting free breakfast, free lunch, free dinner, free snacks, a second lunch, and a second dinner at work. Three, work from home. <laughs> Four, nap pods. <laughs> and five, sporting three different Nike shoes, a Fitbit, an Apple Watch, some Snapchat glasses, and maybe even a pair of Allbirds to work every day, just because you can. From a distance, these examples seem pretty normal. For most of us in this room, we'd call them perks, and rather well-deserved. Many of us have come from families that had nothing, and I know that we all have worked so hard. We've spent late nights in Moffitt scrambling through Piazza trying to find a helpful hint for the 170 homework or the 162 project. We spent an hour staring at one file of code just to realize we missed a quote or we misspelled a variable. We put in 100% studying for that midterm just to realize we were one standard deviation below the average. So, we deserve these tiny parts. Right? <laughs> and I agree. I wholeheartedly agree that we deserve and will have an amazing life because we have worked so hard for this moment. But I've also come to understand why students at this school sometimes begrudgingly call us tech trash. It's, it's so weird to the world that in our 20s, we'll start to experience these comforts that most people don't get to experience until much later in life or maybe even never. And looking at these examples that I listed, I think we can identify that there's one common theme that threads all these statements together. It's this very hefty Berkeley S board that we call privilege. Privilege is admittedly a very heavy word, but yet it's thrown around so much on campus that it almost sounds ludicrous even more so when it's used to describe ourselves. It's one of those phrases that makes you snicker, it makes you cry, it makes you laugh, it makes you smirk, and it makes you ridiculously uncomfortable all at once. And I think it's because when it's used in relation to us, it makes us question what we're not seeing. And that's the thing about privilege, right? It makes it that much easier to disengage from the rest of the world. So, what do we do? 
What's the solution to privilege? The sad reality is that nobody can really tell us what the right thing to do here is, or how we should subsequently live our lives. That's something that we decide on our own. But when we walk off campus for the last time, I know that we're equipped with this powerful tool that'll help us modify the impact of our culture, and more importantly, never lose sight of everyone around us. And that is simply awareness. We're now aware of how to write great code. Me. <laughs> We're also now aware that we should probably look at the GDB manual if none of our print statements work. <laughs> We're now aware that it's okay to go to office hours and it's okay to ask for help. We're now aware that our education is far from complete. We're now aware that our unique, youthful spirit and determination can drive us to move mountains. When we go out into the world, we will be aware of what we have and what we're lucky to have had, including an education at this really peculiar school. <laughs> so, we're aware that this combination of youthful energy and education is a power duo. In fact, it gives us the ability to affect change in ways that are profoundly more impactful than almost any other social group in this country. And it's for that reason that we're aware that today is a day to wholeheartedly celebrate everything we've accomplished, we've learned, and we've persevered for. Because we're aware that we're about to do things differently than the rest. So, to the class of 2018, I say, congratulations. Here's some new beginnings.